merciful God, creator of heaven and earth, grants that as the crucified body of your dear son was laid in the tomb and rested on this holy Sabbath, so we may await with him the coming of the third day and rise with him to newness of life, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job said, A mortal, born of woman, few of days and full of trouble, comes up like a flower and withers, flees like a shadow and does not last. Do you fix your eyes on such a one? Do you bring me into judgment with you? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No one can. Since their days are determined and the number of their months are known to you, you have appointed the bounds that they cannot pass. <clears throat> Look away from them, and did that they may enjoy, like laborers, their days. For there is hope for a tree, if it is cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its shoots will not cease. Though its roots grow old in the earth, and its stump dies in the ground, yet as the scent of water it will bud and put forth branches like a young plant. But mortals die and are laid low. Humans expire, and where, and where are they? As waters fail from a lake, and a river wastes away and dries up, so mortals lie down and do not rise again. Until the heavens are no more, they will not awake or be roused out of their sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in chill, that you would counsel me until your wrath is past, that you would appoint me a set time and remember me. If mortals die, will, there, will they live again? All the days of my service, I would wait until my release should come. <clears throat> Let us say together Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my prey and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. A reading from the book of First Peter. Since Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same intention. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has finished with sin, so as to live for the rest of your earthly life no longer by human desires, but by the will of God. You have already spent enough time in doing what the Gentiles like to do, living in lasciviousness, passions, drunkenness, revels, carousing, and lawless idolatry. They are surprised that, that you no longer join them in the same excess of dissipation. And so they blaspheme, but they will have to give an accounting to, who, to him who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was proclaimed even to the dead, so that 
Though they had been judged in the flesh as everyone is judged, they might live in the spirit as God does. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. For you, Lord Christ. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hone in the rock. And then he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people. He has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers, go, make it as secure as you can. So they went to the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the tomb, the stone. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I'm going to apologize to my virtual friends because I'm going to be kind of turning this way uh, to talk. This is a, probably one of the hardest services of the year, the liturgical year that we do. And it's probably why it's sometimes not done at all or very low attendance. So you are to be commended for your bravery today. And you may be wondering why I would call you brave. And that is because we are witnessing the death of a beloved at this moment. And we are sitting in that place. And as I was thinking about this service, I was trying to put myself in the mind of, of those who loved Jesus and, and followed him. And the closest I could get is the death of my mother. And I want to you to go back to a particular experience you had a death that was really hard. And you know the moments after pronouncing death that it is like the only way I can describe it for myself, being thrown in a, a it's not out of body experience, but you, because you're still there, but it's like you're so separated from the world around you. It's like you've been thrown into some kind of a tunnel and everybody else is going along their life like normal and your life has been turned upside down. And it's that space that takes a few days to kind of dissipate to where the reality has integrated into your body and soul and mind. And that's where they are this morning. This is the reality of this morning of where we're sitting. And even though we're post-resurrection, we know what the story is going to be tonight, that reality of the human condition of our bodies will die, our flesh will be no longer one day, as we have watched and buried our loved ones over the years, that will continue until our death. And then one day we will be the ones that people will experience the death of. My mother's death was painful. I have sit at a lot of deaths over the years as a chaplain. 
and I have never experienced one like her. She and I, I'm, we're going to go there because this is this is what this morning is about. You know, she was, and this has been 30 years now. She was bleeding internally. She she had cancer that had metastasized. And she was bleeding internally, so she was in a lot of pain if you touch her or anything like that. And her, they kept her in the ER because she was so um, fragile, they couldn't really move her. Uh, it took hours before they finally moved her. But what was so, what so captured my attention was the waves of her moaning. It was like she was giving birth. And she would go through these waves where she would be crying, and trying to, you know, deal with the pain that was racking her body, and then she would have calm, and then it would come back again. And she had these waves for, for a long, long time, until they were able, of course, to give her the medication she needed to calm her, and then she, she finally passed. But sitting with her in that space where she was transitioning in a very physical way, very audible way of, of birthing. There was a birthing happening in the midst of the dying. I can't rationalize that, but I know it to be true. We know to be true, Jesus didn't die. God isn't dead, right? And that is the profound power of sitting in this space, of, of recognizing that tension in that this in-between that was, that is, and will always be of, of the birthing and the dying. The birthing and the dying. It is a part of our lives every day. Every day. What do we do with that? What do we... You know, do we, do we give attention to the dying part of ourselves or the birthing part? And how do you discern which it is? And that's so, such an important part of our journey with God because God seeks to do a new thing. That's what we're going to learn over this weekend is that God's always about doing a new thing, but doing a new thing means something's dying. <laughs> you know, and it may be a wonderful thing, you know, your children have to grow up and move on, but there's grief in that. There's a dying that happens, right? And so, but yet there's celebration too, and there's birthing that happens. And that reality of the dance between the birthing and the dying is so real. And we sit in this space with the disciples today of more of the dying and the pain and the sorrow while they're trying to wrap their brains around all of the things that Jesus had taught them. And it's starting to make, it's starting to like, oh my gosh, this is, this is, is this real? Is this, you know, what, what's happening? And in the, in the days to come, they will, they will be out of that tunnel and into that reality. Jesus is dead, but he's not. He's not. He is risen. He is risen. In the midst of life, we are in death. From whom can we seek help? From you alone, O Lord, who by our sins are justly anchored. And your response? Lord, you know the secrets of our hearts. 
Shut not your ears to our prayers, but spare us, O Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitterness of eternal death. O worthy and eternal judge, do not let the pains of death turn us away from you at our last hour. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitterness of eternal death. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.